as I was thinking over the break about chapel for the spring semester, I got kind of discouraged thinking we can't be together again. It's been 315 days since we've met together in chapel and had the worship band lead us in singing and, and able to have speakers in and, and share just the, the joy of worshiping together. So thinking about having to go online again this semester, it kind of got me down. And then I realized God said, you know, we could bring speakers in that we could never have if we were going live. You know, God will always give us an inspiration for how to use something difficult and turn it into something good if we'll look for his opportunities. And so the Lord said, look for the people you'd love to have come and couldn't normally get to come because either they live too far away or they wouldn't ever have time to fly into Bellhaven for chapel and have them share all in one semester. And so I thought through a list of friends that I've got all over the world, and I invited them to speak in chapel, and every single friend accepted the invitation, and I'm so glad they've all agreed to do about a 15-minute uh, video for our chapel series this spring. And so we're going to start today with Dr. Barrett Jones. He is a, a Bellhaven alum. He is uh, uh, was a in the Air Force as a military doctor and then a medical missionary in Malawi. He and his wife both graduated from Bellhaven, have been such wonderful alumni, and he has been our primary COVID doctor working with our athletes who were tested for COVID all through the fall semester. So for him to share today, you're especially going to be encouraged on his insights on how to deal with COVID. So I thought we'd start there with our physical needs. And then next week, Ann Huffman, psychologist from Los Angeles, California, very experienced and very wise, is going to share about the emotional impact of COVID and how God can use this time to strengthen us. The week after that, the week of the inauguration, we have Joy Mosley, who's the Director of Government Affairs for the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities in Washington, D.C. She's in charge for all of the lobbying for Christian colleges on Capitol Hill. And she's also a Bellhaven alum. She did her MBA with us before she went on to law school. So Joy will share with us that week. And then we're going to have a number of international guests. And the first of those will be Ramez Atala. And Ramez is president of the Bible Society of Egypt. He was a significant leader in the in the uh, uh, uprising in Egypt a number of years ago with a dramatic change in their government and all that went on through the Middle East. And he has been a wise voice for reconciliation through many uh, uh, decades of service there in Cairo. And then the week after that, my brother, Les Parrott, some of you may not know he's my brother, some of you may know of him, uh, who writes books on marriage and family, he and his wife, Leslie, but he's written a book called Healthy Me, Healthy Us. He's going to talk about relationships, and uh, he'll share in that next chapter. The week after that, one of my dear friends, Dr. Leighton Ford. Leighton is going to be 90 years old next year. He is one of the great statesmen of the Christian church. He has been a <clears throat> significant leader of the Lausanne movement through uh, a long time and a great evangelist. He's married to Billy Graham's sister and so has deep relationships with Billy Graham through his life. And I've been privileged to be chair of Leighton's board for many, many years and uh, serve with him. And so glad he's going to be with us. And the next week, we'll go international again with Ajith Fernando, who's one of the great Bible teachers of the world. He's spoken at all the significant conferences that have been conducted over the last couple of decades and is always sought after, very wise, very insightful. You will love hearing from Ajith. The week after that, we have Ronnie Agnew. Ronnie is president of Mississippi Public Broadcasting, and he also serves on the national board of public broadcasting. Very significant voice in the media arena and a great friend of Bellhaven right here in Jackson. And then the week after that, somebody else from Mississippi, Scott Castleman, pastor of First Presbyterian Church. He's an alum of Bellhaven. He's a brand new board member to our board of trustees. And I have found his messages through COVID online being some of the most helpful things I've listened to. And so you'll enjoy hearing from Scott. The week after that, Doug Birdsall, who is the 
uh, honorary co-chair of the Lausanne Movement, was the president of the American Bible Society, had been a significant leader in world evangelization, been a dear friend of mine for a long, long time. And Doug always has a global perspective on everything he talks about. And I think you'll really enjoy hearing from him. And the week after that, a friend I've wanted to have the Bell Haven forever and never can get him, Clarence Gilliard. Uh, Clarence is uh, an actor. Uh, he is now on the faculty of, uh, of the uh, Graduate School of Theater for the University of, of uh, uh, Las Vegas. Um, he was, uh, for those of you who've been around a long time, students you won't know, but in Matlock, uh, uh, in Walker, Texas Ranger, co-star of that. He was in Top Gun, if you want to go way back in the movies. Um, and uh, Clarence has been a dear friend for a long time. He was an alum of the school where I was present before I came to Bellhaven. And so I love Clarence and I'm so glad he can share. And the week after that, our friend Billy Kim is going to share. You've been to the Billy Kim Center. You know about Billy Kim. He's going to share. And for his message, he's going to invite three Bellhaven alums who are Koreans working with him, who've been to our campus, who've been engaged with us to share their perspective on these times of COVID. And then David Brickner. David is president of Jews for Jesus in San Francisco. We've had him on campus about every other year to speak in chapel because he's such a powerful preacher and he's always got a word that is so insightful. And so I'm really glad David can share with us again this year. And then as we get close to the end of the semester, Bob Dahl. Now, if you are a student of business, Bob Dahl is one of the great gurus of the future of the markets. You'll see him on MSNBC and their business analysts often talking about the future of the markets. He is one of those uh, people who when uh, he speaks to the market, um, uh, they react. Uh, his insights are so significant. And Bob is a wonderful evangelical leader and so glad that he's gonna share with us. And then for our last chapel, of this remarkable semester. Uh, Ligon Duncan, the Chancellor of Reform Seminary. Ligon is such a dear friend of Bellhaven. He loves us. He's been on our board of trustees. He's spoken to chapel so many times. He knows us inside and out. And I've asked him to kind of summarize this remarkable year of dealing with the pandemic. So that's the plan. And I hope you'll engage in chapel this semester. It's going to be a chapel series like we'll never be able to have again. We could never bring these people again. So I hope you'll take advantage to engage in chapel, to, uh, to let God speak to you through each one of these unique and remarkable leaders who will come to us virtually in chapel.
Well, uh, good morning, Bellhaven. It's a pleasure to be able to share with you this morning, uh, even though it's uh, virtual and we're not together. Uh, Dr. Parrott asked me if I would share some of the experiences I've had over the last, uh, I guess, 10 months now during the COVID pandemic, uh, the, some of the things perhaps that God has taught me over this last um, several months. Um, I've met a lot of you. I've been on campus and had the privilege of taking care of you and um, evaluating you for COVID. Uh, you may not have felt that that was a privilege, but I've been glad to be able to serve you in, the, in Bellhaven in such a way. Uh, those who haven't met you, that's probably a good thing, but um, just to introduce myself, my name is Barrett Jones. I'm a family medicine doctor. My wife and I both graduated from Bellhaven. I graduated in two, uh, 1999 and my wife in 01. Uh, after Bellhaven, I went to medical school at UMC just down the road and then uh, served in the Air Force uh, right after residency. Uh, my wife and I felt called to missions and so we uh, pursued uh, that and the Lord led us to a small country in Africa called Malawi where we served as, med I served at least as a medical missionary, my wife in other uh, capacities. I was working at a hospital called Partners in Hope where I took care of mostly HIV patients and treated TB and the like. Um, I have lots of uh, that I could share with you about COVID-19, about things that the Lord has taught me. Um, I um, will limit that to just a few things. Um, when the World Health Organization declared uh, the coronavirus that causes COVID-19 as a global pandemic, our hospital began preparing for how we could best um, take care of the needs of our patients, both those who concerned for exposure to COVID or were showing symptoms of it, as well as our uh, healthy patients or the patients that were coming to us for their uh, chronic or daily healthcare needs. And so what happened is our clinic became um, a, a referral site for anyone who was concerned that they may have it or the doctor was concerned based on their symptoms. And so we began evaluating and treating people for COVID in early March. Uh, all that to say, uh, we quickly had to become uh, not experts, but very knowledgeable about COVID and um, uh, the testing and the evaluation and the treatments and keep up with that along this um, ever evolving uh, uh, pandemic. Um, so my world has been COVID for the last uh, 10 months. And um, there are several lessons that I have learned both personally and uh, uh, larger than that. I'll limit that to three, but to frame what I wanna say, I just wanna share a quote from a movie. The movie is called Hugo. Uh, it's set in um, Paris, France during the, I guess, post, uh, post uh, World War II era. It's about a little boy named Hugo Cabret. Uh, he's uh, orphaned and I guess you could say he's a street kid. He's sort of cast out and he takes refuge in this train station uh, where he hides out in a clock tower. He is a sweet, has a sweet disposition. He's always fixing things. He's uh, um, inclined to find broken machines that have been cast out, and he's always scavenging for parts to try to fix them and repair them. Uh, one day, he's talking with another young uh, uh, child, a girl, and they're looking out over the train station. It seems like everyone has a purpose, has a meaning, and they struggle with that as they uh, don't necessarily find that in themselves. And, um, she asked him uh, during that conversation, why are you always fixing machines? And he says something to the effect, um, I think broken machine, the reason broken machines make me so sad is because they can't do the thing that they've been created to do. And then he ponders, I wonder if that's the same with people. When they can't do the thing that they've been created to do, it's like they're broken. When they lose their purpose, it's like they're broken. And so keep that thought. I'm going to come back to that as we talk. The first thing that I would share with you um, is contentment in the midst of brokenness. 2020 has been a year like no other, hasn't it? Uh, it has been a year of frustrations. Uh, we've had the pandemic. We've had death of loved ones and national icons. Um, we've had racial injustice and natural disasters. Uh, it's been a difficult and a frustrating year for all of us. I've had um, many patients in my office who I've seen the dread in their eyes, especially my elderly, more vulnerable patients, when I tell them they have COVID-19. I've had people who I've consoled because they've lost loved ones because they contracted COVID-19 um, and died from that, uh, contracted it at things like their wedding. Um, I've seen the fears of, of and the frustrations of social isolation and, and that uh, while we've 
maintain distances to protect ourselves, the effects of that has caused as well. Many of you have been in my office and I know that this has been a hard year for you. Uh, college is a fun time. It's a time to have uh, good experiences and to enjoy college life and that's been difficult. Uh, as we've had to be careful with our large gatherings and limit our uh, interactions. It's been difficult for you to be on the field or on the court or in the classroom. And some of you have quarantined for more than one time only to come back and then develop a fever and a cough and <laughs> wind up in my office one more time for one more swab. Uh, I've never seen so many people be uh, excited to hear that they have strep throat or mono. <laughs> um, so this has been a hard year. It's been a year of frustration. It's been a year, if I could describe it in one word, of brokenness. When our family served in Malawi, we, um, we were constantly surrounded by brokenness. Brokenness, uh, be it due to extreme poverty, overwhelming healthcare needs, or the lack of resources. I saw people die that I could have easily treated here. Uh, we struggled with our own brokenness, loneliness, and sometimes uh, grief, uh, frustrations of going days on end without electricity and rationing our water making ourselves vulnerable as we uh, nav adopted our daughter and navigated through a corrupt and broken system. But in the midst of that brokenness, we learned contentment in God. And as some of the things that we found comfort in, perhaps more comfort than we should have, were removed from us, God became central, more and more central to us. Um, the Psalms became a pillow to rest my head on, if you will. Uh, I would encourage you during this time to, to dwell on the Psalms. A great place is Tim Keller's devotional, uh, the Songs of Jesus, as he walks through the Psalms over the year. All the emotions that I just described are in the Psalms, and uh, there are examples of how we can go to God with uh, these different things that we struggle with. So learn and please be reassured that there is contentment in the midst of brokenness. You haven't lost your purpose. Uh, the second thing that I would say that I've learned and would encourage you with is, man, it is not only have we gone through a pandemic, but it's been a pandemic in the midst of a contentious election and the world of social media. There are so many voices out there competing for our, our hearts and our minds. And how do we navigate through such a difficult time? Uh, it's easy to be um, uh, uh, swallowed up with all the frustrations, the hate, perhaps, the um, arguing. Uh, it's easy to get Facebook screaming mad over all these different things. And um, I would encourage you with your verse of the year, actually. I love the verse that, that your school has picked out. What a fitting verse, Psalm 112, verse 4, that God, um, that there is lightness in the darkness for the upright, for the godly. And uh, what that is saying is that there is, God shows us the path uh, in the midst of the darkness. And I love how Psalm 112 is read in companion with Psalm 111. If Psalm 112 is the character of how those of us who love and fear the Lord should be, it is based on the character that we see of God in Psalm 111, that God is a covenant-keeping Redeemer, that He is a God of justice and mercy and grace and uh, righteousness and holiness. So don't forget to, uh, don't let all the voices in the world uh, rob you of the central voices that we should find in the Scriptures. We've, in our church at Redeemer, we've uh, gone through the one another verses, and that's been a great encouragement to me to focus on when I'm frustrated over differences in opinions about how we should per, um, pursue going through this pandemic, uh, to remember to love one another, to have humility. One of the artists that I enjoy following, uh, he's a, um, his, name is Propaganda, his stage name is Propaganda, uh, but he recently tweeted uh, that um, over this year, uh, his opinions have changed, his views have changed, and some of that has been by listening to people he otherwise would have never given the time of day to. And he ends his tweet uh, saying that he's learned that humility is a superpower. And so I would encourage you to just, that has been something personally, to have a posture of empathy and humility uh, in a time where it's very difficult. No pastor ever took a seminary course on how to lead a church through a pandemic. Schools have never had to really think through this. We've never had to think through this. So having some grace and patience uh, with uh, each other has been a lesson for me. Lastly, uh, if I could uh, encourage you that there is a redemptive purpose to this. There is a redemptive purpose to the year of 2020. There is a redemptive purpose to COVID-19. Um, this came up a lot and while we were in Malawi when people would come in with disease why, and we would be asked, why did this happen? Um, and one of the verses, one of the chapters I would go to a lot would be John chapter 9. 
And in that chapter, the disciples are walking along with Jesus and they come up to a blind man and they ask Jesus, why is this man born blind? Uh, they're looking for the reason. And Jesus' reply is, uh, um, in a paraphrase, but uh, that the works of God might be evident in him. The point is that there is a redemptive purpose in our suffering. There's a redemptive purpose in the disease and the brokenness in the world. The whole world longs, all of creation longs for the return of Christ, for the day that all of sin, the effects of sin are, are dealt with and are no more. But as Christians, um, we um, are called to be part of that redemptive purpose. And we neither turn a blind eye to the suffering in this world, nor are we fatalists. And I would encourage you to pray through and ask the Lord how He can use you in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of loneliness, in the midst of brokenness. Um, how can you love your neighbor? That has been something that I've reflected on a lot this year. I love that your school has taken ambitious measures to keep you safe uh, with this testing program that you'll be going through in the next semester. It reminds me of when I was deployed to Iraq and the message that we had on our wall in our emergency room said, um, whatever it takes, we've got your back. And when I see that, um, your school is trying to keep you safe, it's trying to keep you healthy, they're trying to keep you in the classroom, on the court, on the field, and um, be blessed by that. Um, so we know that we can have contentment in the Lord. We know that we can. He guides us through the midst of the darkness and shows us light in the midst of the darkness and that there is a redemptive purpose in his, his plan and a redemptive purpose in COVID-19. I'll, I'll just love to end with a quote from um, Narnia. Remember, too, that quote from Hugo, that we, we, are not, we have not lost our purpose in the midst of our brokenness. And even as a Christian, I might say that we uh, have a heightened purpose in the midst of that brokenness. But Aslan is on the move, and the Lord will return all the right all the wrongs of the world has experiences because of sin will be set right. And remember this, that wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. And when he bears his teeth, winter meets its death. When he shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. I hope you have a great semester. Uh, and I love you and care about you. If you need us, we're here for you. Amen.